Aerodrome's Aero token has crashed more than 55% from its local all-time high. Now, when people tend to look at this, they get afraid, right? So when the cascading downtrend starts, retail only need a bit of, you know, spark and then everything goes bust. They start selling, they start exiting. Sorry to interrupt you there, folks. I just want to quickly chime in and mention that we are currently working on a project called Numerical. It's DeFi as a service, meaning you'll get exposed to real DeFi protocols that generate real revenue, aka real yield, and you're going to get a cut of this without doing the setup yourself. All you have to do is enter, claim, or withdraw. Very simple. So your capital is available at all times to take, and you can choose the option where to invest. More details in the description and in our community chat. So this whole started with a simple UI issue that I'm sure you faced in other DeFi protocols if you are a veteran at this point. Contracts are saved, but sometimes there's a discrepancy with the user interface and it might display something different. Now, to circumvent this, just take your wallet, take your portfolio, put it on dbank.com. If you see your position, then you're absolutely fine, all right? That's super simple. User interface aside, you're okay. They did, you know, publish a fix. They did also mention on the Twitter that this is a problem. Some people are not seeing their position, their liquidity positions, but it's there, it's accruing rewards, everything's fine. Even though they said this time and time again, and now it's 100% fixed, still people panicked and, panicked and sold, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is that you need to understand that IRO follows the main market now so arrow follows what pdc and east are doing and mainly ethereum because ethereum is the denominator for major altcoins so you don't need to look at absolute valuation you need to look at relative valuation so in this case the price of iro versus ETH should give you a clear indication if you actually check that chart you can clearly see that there is no outperformance of ethereum so this chart copies almost exactly the IRO USD chart, right? So minus a few discrepancies, but overall, it is indeed following what Ethereum is doing. Ethereum goes up, IRO goes up, and vice versa. That's not to say that it cannot have, like I said, spikes or down, downtrends versus Ethereum, but that's short-lived. The pattern is the same. So overall, this is what caused the descending price trend. Now let's look at other things, right? Let's look at actual, you know, utility, actual adoption of the IRO token. Because at the end of the day, if these things are happening, if there's development, if there's future, if the foundations are not shaky, there's, there, there's no need to worry, right? Price action will do its thing, but at the end of the day, it's the foundation that needs to be secure, all right? So if that's all right, everything checks out, then no need to worry, just you know keep going about your day and things will level out eventually so let's look at these things one thing i want to say is that iro right now is listed on sony.finance as a form of collateral so if you go on sony.finance and you click on base you can clearly see that it's there now having a DeFi token being integrated in other DeFi protocols is actually a big deal right because right now what people can do with their IRO token is that they can either sell or look for the IRO. So having now the ability to use it as a collateral is an added layer of so-called utility. All right. So like I said, having a DeFi token integrated with other protocols gives it this mature state and allows people to do more things with it than, you know, the initial farming and dumping which was the case when they first started, let's be honest, all right? And they also uh, are about to pass a proposal to do this on Aave, and that is a much, much bigger deal. Aave has billions of total value locked, and that's super impressive. Now, one caveat here is that if you look at collaterals on lending markets, IRO is potentially the only one with such high inflation. Remember, the only caveat, the only downside to all of this is that IRO releases approximately between 9 and 10 million tokens every single week. So every epoch. And that's a bit problematic, right? So you have a token that you can use as collateral, but that token is being minted. So I think 
in order for IRO to reach a certain price maturity, inflation has to be curbed. Now, they are actually buying back lots of these tokens and they are, you know, burning them. But again, the burning mechanism alone is not enough because at current price action, those emissions are worth about 9 mil, a bit more. So that's a lot of money, all right? So there needs to be a lot of buy pressure to offset all of this. And most of the buy pressure, as you can clearly see, if we go on the chart and we look at numbers of buys versus sells, are coming from big players, right? So who wanna list their token. Because for them, it makes sense. It's also sort of an advertising type of thing where right now people can go to IRO, filter out, let's say, high APRs, and then they see an exotic pair and then they go, go and look at the token and then they can do additional research if they like what they see so it's a win-win situation overall right so that this project gives aerodrome money and aerodrome gives them uh you know a form of advertising which is good so yes aero being integrated in lending market is is a big deal but then it's also very risky because you know it's not at that maturity level yet in my opinion at least so there needs to be, you know, more adoption. And if you want to do this, if you want to collateralize the IRO, I would say going above 30 to 40% LTV is, you know, extremely, extremely risky. So just keep that in mind. But, you know, the option is there right now, which is pretty good. You can also remember, you can also lend it on ExtraFi, which is, you know, super safe from a lending perspective and you don't have to borrow you can just lend it on sony the apr is actually quite impressive as well if you want to keep your tokens you don't want to sell them and you know you want to you want them to do something in the meantime you know actually give you some yield also one more thing to check if you want to assess the foundation of a protocol is actually the protocol metrics and that's something that i keep talking about and that's something that i always tend to see are we on an ascending curve is everything all right is the protocol making money are people interested is there any volume right so those are things we need to understand and are people committing to locking their tokens to actually take advantage of this so look here the fees the bribes and the you know addition of both we're still in pretty much an ascending curve and yeah sure last epoch wasn't amazing but then you can clearly see that the one before that was an all-time high in terms of fees and bribes. So I would assume that we will pick up another all-time high once markets, you know, have more volume coming in. Because last week was a bit weak in terms of volume overall. I'm not only talking about Aerodrome. So of course that will reflect Aerodrome's performance in terms of fees and bribes accumulation. So we're all good from that perspective, right? So money is coming in. People are making money from their VI roll lockups, so all good. That pattern is still increasing. Now, sure, like I said, there's not much that is being locked, but the net locked at least is positive. So that's good. And there's, you know, more or less four years on average. So people are indeed locking long term. And then the volume, as you can see, is still pretty much close to its all time high, even though, like I said, last week's volume was not impressive. And they have started implementing their version of Uniswap v3 called Slipstream. So Slipstream is that, but it's more cost efficient. So they have additional mechanics. I think you can read about this on their Twitter account. I spoke about this in a previous video. You can check that out as well. So conclusion here. All right. Overall, there is no real justification behind the fear that I saw on Discord and on Telegram. Not at all. A small UI, UI issue will not, you know, uh, bring bring doomsday here. So it's nothing, right? It can happen. It's all right. Your money is safe and it's fixed now. That aside, you see, on the relative valuation uh, perspective, we are following the main market, right? So if that goes up, we go up. If that doesn't, then, you know, unfortunately, that's the situation. From a structural standpoint, IRO is developing, integrating in other DeFi protocols, mainly lending markets, and they're still producing fees, bribes, and volume, you know, on a high ascending curve. We do have a Telegram group, consider joining. We talk about crypto DeFi overall. We talk about platforms like Aerodrome and other stuff, and we share 
potential lucrative platforms as well as upcoming airdrops even though i would say that last week's airdrops uh announcement wasn't amazing you know namely eigen layer but that aside there's still lots of opportunities out there and with that see you in the next one have a good one